Today, I'm spilling the beans on caffeine. Is it the ultimate performance enhancer or is it just more hype? I'll debug myths, I'll uncover its secrets and I'll reveal whether it could or could not up your running game. Before we find out what it does and whether runners should be using it as a performance enhancer, let's find out whether we should be using it at all. Coffee is often seen as a diuretic, which means it dehydrates you, but that has been dispelled. It's really only in very, very large quantities of coffee or caffeine that it becomes dehydrating. Before we find out whether it's useful for runners, let's first define coffee versus caffeine. Obviously, there is caffeine in coffee, but the levels of caffeine will vary according to the different brands of coffee. I mean, that, that's common sense. And essentially, an espresso coffee has the highest amount of caffeine versus a plunger or a French press, which has the least amount of caffeine. Both caffeine and coffee equally improve endurance performance. In scientific studies, what they do is they take athletes using caffeine or coffee versus athletes who have a placebo, and they've shown that there is up to 5% up to improvement in endurance performance. Before we start chugging espressos or cappuccinos before our next long run, let's first find out how caffeine works in the body. There are a few theories as to how caffeine works within the body, but the most widely accepted is the effect that caffeine has on the brain. And the reason for that is mostly due to a hormone called adenosine. Adenosine in the body is the hormone responsible for tiredness, fatigue, and it affects the pain receptors. And there are chemical molecules within caffeine that are very similar to adenosine. In very simple terms, more adenosine in the body means more fatigue or tiredness. And because caffeine has very similar structures to adenosine, what happens is in the body, caffeine will stop the adenosine from binding to the receptors that it does normally, which therefore means that it inhibits your tiredness or fatigue. So it almost gives you a fake feeling of not being tired or fatigued. A second theory is also that it, it increases the release of calcium. The release of calcium is responsible for contraction of muscle. And so the theory then goes, if you supplement with caffeine, that you may get an increased force production within your muscle. So more caffeine might mean more force production in the muscle. The intake of caffeine can increase the release of catecholamines. Now, what are catecholamines? Fancy word. It's essentially a, a, the word for the hormones like adrenaline, your fight or flight hormones. And so an increase or an intake of having caffeine will give the body that same effect of having that release of adrenaline in the fight or flight aspect. Because of these theories and the effect that caffeine has on the physiological system, the, the adrenaline, the fight or flight, the reducing of fatigue, there's a lot of scientific backing within the literature to show that caffeine is, is very positive for your endurance training and racing. So now we've been talking about the scientific literature, but let's find out specifically if the use of caffeine is beneficial for runners. Studies date as far back as the 1970s, and they show that it improves your time to exhaustion. So when they're having some runners in their study, they give them caffeine and they measure time it takes for those runners to get absolutely exhausted and not run anymore. And the caffeine has shown to improve or lengthen that amount of time that runners are able to run for. And therefore, it is a very good ergogenic aid or something that you take to aid your performance, to make you go further for longer. Before we have a look at how much is too much, let's see if it works for everyone. Studies show that there is a very, very individual response to caffeine and the effect it has on your body. So it is very much a trial and error situation for yourself to figure out if caffeine does actually have an effect on you. This is a very complex concept. There are many things that can affect the absorption of caffeine. First of all, the absorption obviously happens within your gut. And so that is individual responses. There could be that if a fuller gut it slows down the absorption. There are also genetic and non-genetic factors that can affect your caffeine absorption. These include your intake of vegetables, smoking, your training status, as well as for females, their menstrual cycle. And of course, there are differences in how caffeine is absorbed in terms of the amount of dose, the timing of, of your caffeine intake, as well as the source of the caffeine, which we are going to touch on a little bit later in this video. Before we find out exactly how much caffeine you need as a runner, I bet you didn't know this. Between 1984 and 2004, coffee was a banned substance on the official WADA doping list. 
It's quite a surprising thing. And the reason they took it off the doping list is that coffee metabolizes at very different rates. And so it's quite difficult to distinguish patterns of use within blood sampling. And there are essentially three factors that WADA consider when deciding whether a substance should be on the banned list. And it's these three things. Does it enhance sport performance? Does it pose a risk to the athlete? And does it go against the spirit of the sport? And so they determined that coffee or caffeine specifically doesn't necessarily fulfill all three of those criteria. Now we get to the fun stuff. Let's talk about what exactly, how much, and when you should be ingesting caffeine to improve your running performance. Caffeine comes in many different sources, the most obvious and most common being coffee. Now being different types of coffee between beans and ground coffee and instant coffee, you are gonna get different amounts of caffeine. Instant coffee is going to be shown, has been shown to have the most regular amounts of caffeine per dosage, whereas your beans and your ground coffee vary a lot more. However, if you just really enjoy a good cup of coffee and you want to also get some endurance benefits, a double espresso will probably do the trick. Some other sources of caffeine that you could consider for training and racing purposes are caffeinated gels, cola drinks contain caffeine, energy drinks obviously contain caffeine, espresso, and now there's a newish concept called caffeinated chewing gum. The key thing about the caffeinated chewing gum is that the, the time onset for absorption is much quicker than all of those other sources. And so this brings me to the next point around the timing or when you take your, your caffeine for it to be the most effective for your endurance sports. Studies suggest that you ingest your caffeine 30 to 90 minutes before you want to have its effect. As an example, I take part in the Two Oceans Ultra Marathon, which is a 56 kilometer race around Cape Town. And I take my caffeine in, in and around the 34 kilometer mark because at about the 42 or 45 kilometer mark, you really start climbing. And so that is when I want the caffeine to really start having an effect. So you have to time your caffeine intake to be when you want it to have an effect. And for the most part, that is anywhere between 30 to 60 or 90 minutes before the time. And that is the key part around those caffeinated chewing gums is that those only require 15 to 20 minutes before to have an effect. So you're in a race and you're ready to take your caffeine 30 to 90 minutes before the time you need it. How much should you be taking? We use a Goldilocks effect. Small doses are way better than large doses and medium doses are way better than smaller doses. And so the ideal amount being moderate is around 2.9 milligrams per kilogram body weight. Just really remember here that more is not better when it comes to caffeine. The more you have, you risk gastrointestinal issues, you risk perhaps spiking and uh, coming down a bit too hard, so more is not better. Keep thinking of the Goldilocks effect that smaller is better than too much and moderate is the best and perfect amounts. Just a reminder, that optimal doses are very individually responsive. So it is key that you use trial and error to figure out what works for you. Some of the figures and values that I've given here today are recommendations, but again, you need to figure out if A, you are a responder, and B, what the exact and correct amount is for you. There are some differing opinions whether or not you would benefit from caffeine fasting in the build-up to a race. Some of the literature suggests that this is possible, that if you step away from ingesting caffeine a couple of weeks before the race, and then you take it as you're going into your race, that it could be more effective. But a lot of the studies are suggesting that that is not the case. So again, I think that is very key that you trial and error that for yourself to figure out what works for you before a race. Now that you have unlocked the powers of caffeine and have learned how to supercharge your performance, it's time to take your running to the next level. In this next video, we're diving into the seven habits of highly successful runners and the lessons that you can apply to your training too.